In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph what's called a cumulative frequency curve or OGIV. One of the things that I want you to notice is the name of this graph. It is called the cumulative frequency curve, which means that we need to know what the cumulative frequencies are. So if you take a look at the example right here, there are going to be times when they're going to give you your intervals and they're going to give you the frequency, but they don't give you the cumulative frequency. If the question says to create or to graph a cumulative frequency curve or an OGIV, then it is your job to realize, oh, first I need to add a column with my cumulative frequencies. And as a review, the way cumulative frequencies work is that, for example, so far in the first interval, I have a frequency of 15. Then you add the 24 to 15 and you get 39. If you add 39 to 12, you get 51. And if you add four, you get 55. And notice the total and the last number in that column always match. In order for us to create this graph, I'm gonna show you a four step plan to success, as I like to call it, for you to be able to get your ordered pair so you know exactly what you have to graph. And that's gonna be given to you in four steps. Step number one is that you're going to add a zero to the top of the cumulative frequency column. So you're gonna add a zero to the top. Step two is that you're going to add an interval at the bottom. And I have put the steps for you here on the left hand side. So step one, zero to the top. Step two, you add an interval to the bottom. Here are my intervals. And I'm going to add an interval to the bottom. And in reality, the only thing I care about is repeating that last number. So I'm gonna add 60 is less than or equal to T. And I don't even care what the rest of it is because I just really need that 60. I'm going to circle the leftmost numbers. That means right here, I'm gonna circle these numbers. And then finally, I'm gonna draw a diagonal. So notice, I'm gonna connect the zero with the zero. 15 with 15, 30 with 39, 45 with 51, and 60 with 55. I'm gonna do that one more time. So the four steps are, you're going to add a zero to the top of the cumulative frequency column. You're going to add an interval to the bottom. And like I said, in reality, I just care about repeating this last number. You're going to circle these leftmost numbers and you're going to draw diagonals to the cumulative frequency column. And what that does is give us exactly the order pairs that we want to graph. So the order pairs here are going to be 0, 0, 15, 15, 30, 39, 45, 51, and 60, 55. So those are the five order pairs that we are going to plot so that we can create our cumulative frequency curve. So here at the bottom, you're gonna notice it's already been done for us because I'm just showing you how to do this. The first point we said was gonna be zero, zero. So sure enough, look at the first point on the graph. It's the point zero, zero. The second point is 15, 15. So you're gonna to come to the graph. Here's 10, here's 20. So between 10 and 20, there's one, two, three, four, five, which means that it's going by two. So this is gonna be 12, 14, 16. So in between 14 and 16 is 15, and then 15, 15 is gonna be right here. So that's where you get that second point. I'm gonna erase this just so that we don't have all that extra stuff, but this is the point 15, 15. The next one says 30, 39. So I'm gonna to go to 30. Here's 30 right here. And then I'm gonna go all the way up. Here's 40, so I wanna to get to 39. So that's the point 30, 39. Again, I'm erasing so that you see I don't need that stuff. It's just that I'm showing you that that's the point 30, 39. Then we need the point 45, 51. So we go to 45 and 51, which is right here. And the last point is the point 60, 55. So you find 60 on the x-axis, and then you go up until you get to 55, which is right there. Again, I'm gonna erase that line because I don't need it, and I put a point. Make sure that you end it at whatever the last ordered pair is. Sometimes I see students make a mistake and they get carried away, and they just keep this graph going to wherever they feel like it. That's not the way it works. It has a very clear beginning and a very clear end. 
And then the last thing you want to do is connect these with a smooth curve, as smooth a curve as possible because it is called a cumulative frequency curve. So you don't want to just connect them with straight lines. Okay, so that is how you create your cumulative frequency curve. In this case, this problem on the x-axis is about the number of minutes by which flights were delayed. So notice that on the x-axis, they have labeled it T in minutes. Okay, so that represents time in minutes. And then my y-axis is going to be cumulative frequency. It's very important for every graph that you draw that you label the axes. It's super important. And on the IB exam, you need to make sure that you label those axes and you plot the points as carefully as possible. In another video, I'm going to show you what to do with this cumulative frequency curve. What is it used for? But for now, I just want to show you how to actually make one. So again, to backtrack, there's four steps at a zero to the top, at an interval to the bottom, which in reality, I only care about that left number, circle the leftmost numbers and draw the diagonals. That tells me the order pairs that I'm going to be using. I go down to the graph. I go ahead and I plot those order pairs. I connect them with a smooth curve and make sure that you label your axes. That's all very easy. Hopefully you found this video helpful. In another video, I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to use these graphs to answer questions.